Ability meeting. Let me give you an example. There's one of, one of our clients uh, put together a social media policy. And uh, they had um, everything uh, in place. And then something happened in social media. Now, I'm going to be a little cryptic here because I don't want to give away kind of, you know, company secrets. But something happened in social media. And the policy that they had developed was not flexible enough. Because at the end of the day, their response was delayed because the people who were empowered to make decisions didn't have the flexibility to make decisions rapidly. So a good policy enhances flexibility. It also builds knowledge. How many, all, all of you here, uh, in terms of your knowledge of social media, would you say I think intermediate, pretty much? Raise your hands, or, or basic? Basic, intermediate, advanced? Okay, so anyone actually <coughs> responsible for implementing a policy has to get smart about social media. It's just part of the game. So there are many people within an organization who are at a basic level around social media. Once a policy comes down, they decide, okay, I have to start to get smart about social media because if I'm going to implement this policy, I need to understand why it was developed and actually how to, how to implement it effectively. <coughs> Improves readiness. I think all of these empowering flexibility knowledge at the end of the day, it's all about improving uh, readiness in order to engage effectively in social media. Good policy comes from three areas, or three stages, or three steps. People, process, and practice. People. I spoke about this before. It begins and ends with people. What do I mean by people? Let's give some examples. Social media policy begins with the people who are actually going to sit down within the organization and develop that policy. In some organizations, they have developed working groups. And these working groups are cross-functional uh, teams that are engaged and responsible for developing the policy. Those people all have agendas. Those people all have points of view. Those people all have politics within the organization that they have to manage. It begins <coughs> with people, it ends with people, but it's, it begins with the people who are developing that policy and it ends with the people who are going to be implementing that policy. So whenever you're developing a policy, you always have to think about who's actually engaged. People questions. These are the questions that I'd like you to take with you and kind of remember as you engage in the social media policy development <coughs> process. What's, what's your name? Mike. Mike? No, you said Mike. Yes, what's your name? My name's Randy. Randy, okay. Randy, you spoke before about different policies that have to be put together for HR, marketing, Center, right? Right. So if you're developing a policy, I guess the first thing you would think about is who is this going to be for, right? Yes. So a policy uh, that's developed for within HR for, for employees engaging in social media is going to look different than a policy that's for marketing uh, folks in marketing who are going to be implementing uh, social media communications. For example, the people in, uh, in uh, employees engaging in social media uh, and, and they're talking about company issues. They have to think about regulatory issues, certainly, but it's a, it's, it's a definite for the marketing and communications folks who are going to be implementing mm -hmm. social media communications uh, uh, activities. So the first thing you have to think about is who is this policy for? <coughs> that will, just, that will de uh, then determine a number of other things. The second thing is who is this policy actually going to help? At the end of the day, a lot of companies talk about how they want to be customer-centric. They want to be closer to the customer. And they believe social media is a good place and a good way to do that. So at the end of the day, you can think about a policy certainly helping you do things within the organization, but policies are also for the patients, for the healthcare providers, uh, for the people in managed care or managed markets, they're for the government agencies. These policies should be developed to help organizations that your organization uh, is engaged with. Who will it harm? Policies always harm people. Do you know why policies always harm people? Because there's always going to be winners and there are going to be losers. Let's give me, let me give you an example. If a policy is being driven by communications within a pharmaceutical organization, right? And communication says, we want this policy so that we can do X, Y, Z in the social media realm, whether it's build a Facebook page or put a, together a mobile application, et cetera, et cetera. That policy is certainly helping them, but who does it harm? A regulatory person, not to pick on regulatory, but a regulatory person might think, this policy is going to harm me because it's going to make my job harder. 
because I have more things that I have to review. I'm already uh, uh, stuffed to the gills in terms of things that I have to manage <coughs> on a day-to-day -day basis. If you develop this policy, you're going to make my job harder, and then you're going to harm my abilities to, to succeed within this organization. 